Hi everybody, welcome to the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. I'm Missy Matthews with Mike Pursuta. The last time we will be here because in 47 days, the Steelers will be reporting to Latrobe and St. Vincent College, but we are here to talk about mini camp, and I think you learned a few things, right? I did, but first and foremost, I got to tell you, Missy, you know, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but we haven't done this in a while. I know. Walking around the practice field, going basically not where we please, but a lot more options than we're used to in the uh, pandemic era. Yeah. Going into a locker room, interviewing people, talking. You and I are not doing Standing this Standing this close. On we're not Zoom. six feet apart. I've had a blast, and yeah, it's been informative. <laughs> All right, so what's some of your takeaways from minicamp knowing it's still football in shorts, but we were able to see a little bit, especially a situational ball. Yeah, football-like, as we're told repeatedly in these types of environments. But uh, the quarterback story remains the story. There are others, but uh, the quarterback is Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator, acknowledged is the one we like to talk about the most. And back when OTA started, a couple of the offensive linemen told some of us that the order was Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And Matt Canada confirmed at the outset of this week that is the order going into training camp. Now, not exactly a, a, a news flash there, but Canada is higher up on the food chain in terms of the decision-making process than a couple offensive linemen. But what really got my attention, Missy, was when Matt Canada talked about the quarterback competition that's coming up in training camp. And he said, we got to find a way to get to who the starting quarterback is going to be. But we're also very focused on giving everybody a fair shot to do it and fair is not always equal we all understand that and I think what he's telling us there is we've got a plan in mind and we're going to let this thing play out just to make sure we've got it figured out correctly but uh, I don't think you're going to see a fair and equal distribution of reps everybody gets the same amount of work with the ones everybody gets to do the same well they'll probably all do the same drills but uh, it's it's not going to be a race. It's going to be a selection. I think it'll be interesting to see, not that you don't take anything away from here, but the order never changed. And I bet you maybe when we get to Latrobe, that's when we'll see the pecking order change a little bit, depending on the day and what they're trying to accomplish in those practices. No question. But I, I think some guys are going to get more shots than others. Sure. And I think right now, uh, if I'm interpreting things, I, I think it's Mitch Trubisky's job to lose. All right. Anything on the defensive side of the ball that you learned? Well, one more uh, offensive observation right, since we were ahead. just talking about quarterbacks. This is Pickens on Mitch Trubisky taking deep shots. Uh, he's uh, been one of, you know, one of the quarterbacks to release it for sure, you know, going downfield. You know, a lot of other guys, you know, been trying to get with the program and stuff like that, and which is totally fine, you know, reps here and there, so you only have so much opportunity. But, yeah, he's been launching it for sure. And I think that, that uh, betrays a guy who's got confidence, and a guy who was uh, willing to take some chances because he, I think, feels relatively secure in the position he's in. Another thing that we've heard so much about Trubisky during OTAs and minicamp is just his leadership. Even Coach Sullivan, uh, the quarterback's coach, was talking about how he's just taken over that room, takes guys under his wings, always answering questions for some of the young rookies, not just in the quarterback's room, but in wide receivers. He pops into other meeting rooms as well. And as you said, from rookies to you know the veterans that have been here, they seem to really like working with him. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Imagine uh, a better first impression if you go back to uh, when the Steelers signed him in free agency and then going through the OTAs. And this week in particular, I mean, these are kind of glorified OTAs, are they not? But They're still exciting. But everybody's here yeah. and it just feels like it's ramped up a little bit and it's time to take everything to another level. And I think your observation on Trubisky's leadership is spot on. All right. Can we go defense now? Sure. Let's All go right. defense. Uh, not sure how the secondary is going to work out. You know, uh, most of the guys are back, but one of them is not. That was a pretty key guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they have a lot of options, but not of a lot of established commodities. So uh, I'm, I'm curious to see, A, how they deploy the secondary, and then B, with the staff changeover, you have not only Mike Tomlin with defensive expertise, but a new coordinator, Terrell Austin, Brian Flores, who's, you know, got the resume. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm real interested in seeing what they come up with, with nickel, dime, any, any other sub package they want to create. But I think you're going to see 
some tinkering and, and some adjusting. And I think they have uh, a lot of people in place to try different things with, Missy. Yeah, and all the players talking about the addition of Brian Flores, just the military mindset he brings and how he likes to move around to different positions uh, during practice. And T.A. said, you know, that's kind of the plan for now. Let him go. And Flores said, hey, if I'm with linebackers, that's fine. If I'm getting the water, uh, that's fine, too. So he does is definitely one of those Mike Tomlin, put your hands in the pile, give us your best effort. And, you know, no bad idea comes from anywhere. So good ideas can come from anybody. And he seems to have assimilated well, working and playing well with the other coaches. I say this because we talked to Carl Dunbar yesterday, the defensive line coach, and he was asked about Brian Flores. And Carl Dunbar said, and I quote, I told him, you look a lot taller on TV. <laughs> so they're getting along. I, sounds like it. <laughs> All right, do you have any final thoughts from minicamp? Uh, you know, just as, as we get through this and look ahead, one of Mike Tomlin's consistent points of emphasis since he took the job is that second year players are supposed to take a significant leap. You, you maybe make your most improvement from year one to year two. Now, I thought Najee Harris and Pat Fryermuth under the circumstances last year were both really good. What if they take a significant leap? What is that going to look like? But beyond that, you got some guys in, in various stages of development. Presley Harvin, the third, the punter. Um, Trey Norwood in the secondary, mm -hmm. one of those guys I mentioned that can move around and do different things. He got a little experience last year. Dan Moore Jr., the left tackle, thrown in last yeah. year. Let's see where his game's at this year. And here's a really interesting one. Uh, Isaiah with two H's, Loudermilk. And uh, Carl Dunbar, my go-to guy of the week here this week, he was talking yesterday about how he sees similarities with the way that Alex Highsmith got thrown in when Bud Dupree got hurt mm -hmm. and it accelerated Highsmith's development and he was much better for it the next season. Loudermilk, I think, played a lot more than anybody thought he would or would have had Tyson Alawala stayed healthy and had Stephon Tuitt been available. Of course, that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. So now you have Loudermilk coming here as a, as a much more of a known commodity, still player in development, but they've got a better idea about him now. If he takes a big step up, that would certainly help the defensive line. So. Uh, you know, it's always uh, interesting to see if those guys, in fact, do what Mike Tomlin expects and really accelerate their game. And Loudermilk, when I had a chance to talk to him, said, you know, changed his body, added good muscle to him, something that they said, you know, that they wanted to see after his rookie season. So that's certainly something that can help. And as you said, uh, a lot of exciting things to keep an eye on at training camp. And in case if you guys missed it, the Steelers have released the entire schedule so you know what days are open to the public. Mike Pursuto will be sleeping there every single night, every weekend. We'll probably never get him to leave, uh, maybe on the practice field. If I can get there, I'm still working out the details, but uh, you know me, Missy. Mike Tomlin may love camp more than I do. Then again, Just a little bit much? He may not. All right, Mike, other than quarterbacks, because we're going to talk about them way too much probably when we get to Latrobe, what is something you're excited to see at camp? Devin Bush. Uh, really looking forward to see what he's got uh, to bring to the table. Uh, you know, I thought he had a great rookie year, all things considered. Then the injury the second year. Last year wasn't what he wanted. It, it wasn't what the coaches wanted. It wasn't what the defense wanted. But in, in talking to Jerry Osaski, the inside linebackers coach yesterday, he was unyielding in his support of Devin Bush. He believes in the person. He believes in the player. Jerry O's got a little experience with uh, having a, a major knee injury and having to bounce back from that. Here's what he had to say about Devin Bush yesterday. But the measure of you is how you respond to adversity. You know, we bet, we know that our whole lives is, um, you know, when you get hit, you got to stand back up. And, uh, you know, I know Devin, and I'm, I'm confident that, you know, he's going to step up. And when I heard that, of course, I immediately thought that is Jerry Osaski channeling his inner Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Remember Sylvester Stallone as Rocky Balboa in Rocky Balboa when he told his son, who grew up to be the guy in This Is Us, but that's another story. Rocky <laughs> told his son, and I quote, it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. And now that everyone, so I'm looking forward to that. And, and now that everyone's staring at us, uh, I think it's probably a good time to wrap. But I you do know me, I'm a big say, Rocky fan. I like to get there if I can. I'm with you on Devin Bush and the addition of Miles Jack. How is that going to work? Uh, I'll give you that. But we talked should so raise much. all defensive boats, according to Jerry. A hundred percent. But 
We talk about the quarterbacks. What about the offensive line? That entire unit, how is that going to shake out? They invested so much in free agency. Who's playing at what spot? I think that's also going to be something interesting Yeah, to see. I'm glad you brought that up. I've been so QB fixated. Uh, a little bit like secondary uh, in that you have a bunch of guys who have done it, mm -hmm. but not necessarily, not necessarily here. Or together. And, yeah, and who are the best five and how does that play out? Uh, I think they're further along there for two reasons. One, I think they have more options than they had last year. And two, the guys who played last year are way further along. So looking forward to seeing some development there as well. All right, Mike, thanks for all the excitement today. Because that's how winning is done. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And we will see you up in the trope for Steelers Training Camp 2022.